Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Kevin here at Moss Pond and Gun. Today we're going to be covering some stuff with muzzle loaders that should never happen. Uh, many of you guys know right now we're kind of right in the middle of primitive weapon season. Muzzle loaders are extremely popular for hunting. Of course there's a lot of safety things that you have to consider but that's not necessarily what this video is about. You guys should always understand the safety measures required to properly uh, you know, diagnose problems, properly load, fire, unload, and clean your muzzle loader. That's not what this is about. We're talking about stuff like bore obstructions, using the wrong type of powder. Right. So what are, the, what are some of the things that people run into that make these firearms blow up? Well, <clears throat> I think the most common thing that people come up to is they think powder is powder, right? So, for instance, we got some black powder and black powder substitutes. All of those are safe to shoot in a black powder rifle. Smokeless powder on your hand is not. Not safe, Not guys. safe at all. On any sort, not three grains of it's not safe. There's no, no amount that's safe. So there's some of that you run into. Also, uh, you know, hey, I loaded my black powder rifle last season, didn't see a deer. This season comes up, I'm gonna just go ahead and load it and try to shoot another one, have a double charge. That could possibly lead you into some bad things. But we're gonna test all that out and we're gonna hopefully educate some people on the way. Also guys, very common problem. People will seat their projectile yeah. and they won't seat it firmly against the powder. And you leave that air space, even a small air space can cause dangerous pressure spikes with a muzzle loader. So please guys, understand this is for science sake. Do not try any of this at home, okay? Under any circumstances. And one of the first things we're gonna do, all right, let, let's simulate all right, a guy using an 80 grain charge of 2F as his hunting load. Right. And he gets distracted, his grandson, you know, distracts him, or somebody distracts him, his wife's bugging him, and he accidentally double charges it before he sees the bullet. So let's double charge it, 160 grains okay. of 2F, and we're gonna, we're gonna show a, a potential double charge. Let's just see what happens. We've got a rig here that we've uh, made to hold the gun properly. We're gonna try the double charge of 2F, and then we're going to move along to some smokeless powder to show you guys why you never want to put smokeless powder inside of a muzzle loader. Yeah, that's absolutely right. This is going to be a trip. Let's yeah, get after let's it. Let's knock it out. All right, guys, we're in the Polaris here. I've got a nice strong windshield in place. We're back pretty safe distance. We got our fixture set up. Our delivery method is going to be some uh, fishing string. This is 160 grains of 2F powder with a uh, round ball. This is basically a hunter accidentally charged it right. twice. Right. All right, here we go. That's a big boom. It's a big boom, but you know, honestly, it didn't look like a whole lot. Let's, uh, let's go have a look, see what happened. All right. All right, fellas, this is a pretty sturdy rig. I know in the slow-mo there, it's probably hard to tell. It, did, it kicked a lot, but we're nowhere near dangerous territory. So yeah. it's safe to say that if you double charge your musket with double the powder that you're supposed to if you're using the right powder for that musket now 4f is a different story right. if you want we can go get some 4f and try yeah, it but how about we stack the entire barrel full of powder right and then stuff two balls right in the end see what happens yeah my prediction is and i was telling eric i don't think it matters how much powder you put in it because i think once it gets to a certain point it's going to be pushing all that excess powder out before it even has a chance to catch on fire. I think you're right. Right, so I think it's just going to push everything out. I think it'll be fine, but yeah. we'll see. It'll let's, be uh, let's inspect the gun here. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it really flattened that cap out good. Yeah. All right, we're going to load her up, fill the entire barrel <laughs> up full of black powder. Let's see. Go ahead. All right. Such a waste of good black. It's for science. All in the name of science. Science? Science! <laughs> well, you know, it's like, uh, it's like the Mythbusters say. It's only screwing around until you start recording your results, then it's science. Remember, yeah. that, remember that, boys and girls. Oops. Holy. Wow. How much powder is that? Uh, it's about... Three drams? Or more than, way more than that. It's a lot, man. There's still more to go. All right, we've got the entire barrel full of powder. <laughs> you think it'll compress a bit? Yeah. Or yeah. should we just dump a little out? No. Science. Oh, let's do it. Because science. That's why. Let me see that bar that from you there. Oh, yeah. Do, do we, we probably need to dump a dump little, a little bit, bit of it out. Yeah, let's, we got to dump enough out just to, for the balls to fit. That's perfect. Stuff those balls on there. Let 
You're a brave man. I know. Golly. Ah. Normally, if you can still see your, <laughs> normally if you can still see your ball, <laughs> hey, you're in trouble. Ch chances are, if you're loading your muzzle loader and you can still see the projectile at the end, you probably need to reconsider if you really like shooting muzzle loaders or not. <laughs> All right. Wow, this thing's heavier. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get her chalked up, and uh, we're gonna get far and away for this. Yeah. I don't want to be have no part in this. It's gonna be loud. It is. It's a pretty bad sign when everybody is like 30 feet behind you. <laughs> All right, well look guys, we got the entire barrel on this thing full of pure 2F black powder, Swiss black powder. A bit over half a pound. And then we've, yeah, uh, almost a half a pound, or if not more. Mm -hmm. And then we've got two round balls placed on top. They're barely sticking out the end of the muzzle. I mean, they're like right there at the end of the muzzle. So guys, this is worst case scenario. Th this is like Darwinism here. Yeah, if you load your musket like this, you I'm not saying you belong to get blown up. You deserve to get blown up, but here we go. Now after this, we're going to get on some smokeless powder. I think you guys are going to want to see this. Yeah. So here we go. Fire in the hole. Whoa, man. <laughs> it sounded like freaking cannon going off. That's louder than the cannon. <laughs> Ooh, we messed up our rig a little bit. Let's see what we got. Let's go have a look. Well, what happened? Well, we now have a bionic shoulder. I think the shooter would have survived no problem, but he's hurt. The butt plate of the gun, the screws, everything popped right out. It's embedded into this wood quite, quite violently. Stock is cracked all the way down here. The, the inertia was so much that the ramrod actually stood still. <laughs> and it's burnt to a crisp from all the powder that it went out, but the gun didn't blow up. It didn't the, blow up. The stock's fine. Well, the stock did split right or there. The, yeah, the stock split, I meant the barrel's fine. All right, so, <clears throat> see if you can get that easier. So while he's getting that uh, undone, there you go. Good deal. What we're gonna do, all right, so Farmer John goes to load his, his musket to go hunt. His charge is 80 grains of black powder. But instead of putting 80 grains of black powder, he decides, well, I'm out of black powder. We're going to run 80 grains of H110. If it's good for 44 Magnum, it's good for your muzzle loader, right? Good for your 45 caliber muzzle loader. Right, right, why not, right? Why not? That seems like a perfectly logical assumption. Sure. So let's go ahead and get that bad boy out of there. We're going to load it with H110. All right. Now, again, I know we've kind of talked about this, but we're obviously <laughs> joking. This is definitely not safe. Yeah, please don't, don't try this, guys. I don't want to hear that you guys met an untimely fate. This barrel's been cooling for about 15 minutes and it's still pretty warm. So let's get that back in there. We don't need that there. I don't feel too good about this. We're not we're supposed gonna, to feel we're good gonna about do it. this. <sighs> <laughs> oh man, this is just, oh, this is not gonna be good for this gun. No. I foresee <laughs> some definite issues here. Yeah, this is the... Uh, I'm behind Kevin, notice. The end of this. <laughs> I think this, uh, this gun's going to fire at the last shot. And <laughs> look at this butt plate. I'll tell you what, we're going to save this butt plate and we'll, uh, we'll throw it in a man can or something. All right, that doesn't really matter. Seems, all that seems legit. Yep. Okay. All our right, tools girl. out of the way, get our powder. All right, we're going to get her fixtured up. And believe me, we are getting the heck out of Dodge. We set this puppy off and see what happens. Pay attention. You don't want to miss this. All right, guys. The crew is way the hell back for this one. This is where things start to get a little bit precarious with muzzle loaders. You know, we've proven that, you know, granted, the recoil from, you know, a whole barrel full of black powder is not going to be pleasant. It's not going to, you know, be good for the gun, but it won't kill you. We're, we're getting into the territory now where you're dealing with smokeless powder. So Farmer John filled his, uh, his, his 80 grain cylinder black powder measure up with H110. And we're kind of far back, but you know, I'm gonna kind of duck, kindly duck a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna follow your lead. All right, ready? Yep. Well, it didn't banana peel Looney Tune style. Now that I can see, let's see what we got Let's there. go see what happened. What I, do you think about that? I'm beyond surprised. The barrel did bulge right here, right? The, which the bulge knocked the stock, made the stock separate and move forward over here. But the gun didn't blow up. Farmer Joe's fine. He's not supposed to be. 
So this, in any way, does not say it's okay to do this. This gun was supposed to blow up. How it did, I don't know. Well, but you also know the kind of guys we are in this channel. And once we go just to the edge where we're looking over the cliff, we have to put on a jumpsuit and a parachute <laughs> and jump off the other side. So we're going to go ahead and the same gun in the condition it's in right now. We're going to go ahead and go with some uh, Hodgkin type group. It's, it's got to go this, this time. This is a pistol powder. Yeah. This is some pretty fast stuff. Now that H110 wasn't slow by any means, but we're gonna go ahead and uh, charge her up. We got the volumetric black powder measure set on 80. Again, Farmer Joe puts 80 grains of uh, what he thinks is black powder, but it's actually pistol powder, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> this is great. All right. Hey. Not scared, are you? Make sure every little speck gets down yeah, in there. Yeah, make sure we get it all in there. You know, we wouldn't want anything to go right. I also broke my uh, <laughs> bullet starter on the last one. I guess try I owe to... you a bullet starter then. Yeah. You try your other end there. You got it. It's got it. Now make sure you seat that against the uh, powder there. You want not want this thing to go wrong, right? We wouldn't want this thing to blow up. All right, let's load her up and let's get far and away. Yeah, yeah. I'm down with that. Well, guys, we saw there that the H110 initially put in pretty nasty goose egg. It's pretty large. Yeah. In the barrel, all right? But now we've got tight group. This is a very fast pistol powder. Uh, you're talking in the pistol world, 148 grain projectile, about 3.8 grains will propel that projectile about 980 feet per second out of a pistol cartridge. Mm -hmm. So we're talking 80 grains or what Farmer John would perceive as being 80 grains in his volumetric measure. All right. So here we go. All right. All right, tight group, muzzle loader. <laughs> Seems logical. Wow, did you hear that? Yeah, that was... It was like a hang fire. Yeah, that was crazy. Let's go see what we got. <laughs> Let's go see what happened. Yeah, well, it happened. It blew out right here on the side. Not where the goose egg was. So even if this gun was 100% brand new, this still would have happened. Right. Right. There was probably some structural integrity uh, yeah. that uh, might have we might have had to deal with there, but uh, came apart pretty nicely there. Nipple came still apart. usable. Yeah, you got a good nipple still. <laughs> got a. You know, let's see what we got. I mean, everything pretty much. <laughs> came apart like mad there yeah i mean it blew that's and that's the strongest part of the gun yeah right there and that's where it blew well you know what's funny though i i feel like we didn't really get the complete effect we were looking for right even if we have to manufacture the effect we're looking for we got another one of these muzzle loaders we're going to go ahead and stuff it with uh let's just say a triple charge of h110 and three projectiles and let's see if that goose eggs it I'm talking banana peel. Okay. So we made the egg, but now I want the banana peel. <laughs> so guys, hopefully in this video, you can see where you want to be careful what you're putting down your muzzle loader. That's what we really wanted to show here. All right, well, we're going to pretty much pose a worst case scenario. We didn't really get the banana peeling effect that we wanted. So we broke out another musket, exactly the same model CVA that we just mm -hmm. destroyed. And uh, we're going to go for three 80 grain cylinders of type group equaling 240 grains. We're going to stuff three round balls on top of it. Guys, this is <laughs> absolute worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is not going to end well for this gun. All nope. right, so let's go ahead and charge her up here. And we'll get her, get her done. I think that, you know, while we're doing this, like we know what's going to, you know, more or less happen. But the thing is, one thing that I believe this video has proven that's very important to acknowledge here, mm -hmm is the fact that firearms are built with a pretty dang awesome degree of safety into them modern in their designs. Sure, I mean, yeah. modern firearms are, but mm -hmm. yeah, my, my horrible powder measure skills here, that's okay. I think that if you stick with the actual charge that's intended, be it 80 grains or whatever, the thing is they don't recommend smokeless and there's no way I would ever put smokeless um, in a muzzle loader 
as I put smokeless in the muzzle loader. <laughs> um, it's just one of those lawyer up kind of things, but we also see that, I mean, these guns are just not designed for smokeless powder. No, they're not. And if you and treat of course, them, you know, I'm adding smokeless powder, plenty of smokeless right. powder. You treat them the way they're supposed to. I've got friends that have, you know, muskets from the Civil War and yep. uh, they hunt with them. They work fine because well, they've always been treated we, right. We've proven, we've proven that even a double charge is not going to necessarily kill you. Now, it might kick hard and it might embarrass you a little bit, uh, but overall, you're probably not going to die, probably. All right. Here's one. Yep. Uno. Interesting fact while Kevin's doing this. Um, the Battle of Gettysburg, they were finding muskets all over the place, and there's been x-rays conducted of battlefield pickups from Gettysburg, uh, firearms that were found on soldiers' bodies and whatnot, and there were cases of a gun being loaded with sometimes as many as seven or eight powder projectile, powder projectile. In the stress of combat, they were going through the motions and for whatever reason, they weren't shooting anything. And right. It's just scary, you know, to think that uh, those poor men had to put up with that situation. All right, there's another projectile. So all of that space <laughs> is powder and projectile. All right, one more. That's it, that's, that's three. That's it, that's three. All right. Let's do it. Clamp her up and get back there. All right, guys, well, this is pretty much worst case scenario with this musket here. You've triple charged, you put triple projectiles on it, you've shouldered it. What happens? Is it going to banana peel like Elmer Fudd? Let's give it a try. All right. Ah. <laughs> Whoa, oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Whoa, now that came apart, baby. It's yeah. It's knocking leaves off the top of That's trees. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, ladies and germs, this is why you don't put smokeless powder in your muzzle loader, okay? Catastrophic failure. It doesn't get worse than this. It can't get any worse. If you shouldered this firearm and you shot it, you it, would be missing eyeballs, fingers, maybe a hand, or even dead for that matter. Yeah. I mean, this, that pressure had to go somewhere and it just instantly vaporized the muzzle of this, yeah. or the breech of this gun. There's a whole piece of the barrel that is gone. We've got one little piece of it here in the table that's dug really deep in. I think another piece flew up and that's why I think I saw leaves falling down from the from the trees. I think it just went in all eight directions. Look at that. I mean that's I mean that that piece that killed a barrel fold, folded out and got to moving so fast it dug down into this table. I guarantee you had that hit you in the proper spot while you shot this gun that'd be sticking out of your chest you'd be dead. Yeah yeah. You'd be screwed. There's look a, at this rod. Th there's a pin. Yep, there's a, uh, a lock that. pin. Yep, that's a lock pin shot down into the table. One of the pins that came on one of the locks here. Yep. It's, uh, and then all these pieces here we found, I mean, it's everywhere, all, all directions. I'll tell you what, that's why we want to stress with this video yeah. for people to be safe. You know, uh, we got black powder season going on right now. Everybody's getting in the woods and having a good time doing some hunting. A lot of you guys are black powder rifle enthusiasts like ourselves. I love shooting black powder. I love loading uh, black powder cartridges like 4570, 577, 450 martini. I mean, I like playing with black powder, but you have to respect it. You've got to respect the firearm, understand the limitations of the firearm, and make sure that when you're playing around with black powder that you, you remove every single distraction from your loading process. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they get into black powder is uh, they get distracted and then they make mistakes. Like in this case, grabbed the wrong powder, triple charged it. Oh, did I see the projectile? No, I forgot. This is a culmination of the worst case scenario that could happen to you when you're talking about smokeless powder in a musket. Yes, it's, it's extremely dangerous and it's something you're supposed to take very seriously when doing it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, you know, I was expecting kind of the Elmer Fudd banana peel. I've seen those in other barrels and stuff. That that's what I thought was going to happen to. I've never seen one this bad. I mean, this is bad. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it just Either way, worse. whether it banana peels or whether it just catastrophically fails like this one did, you don't want to be the guy holding that gun when that happens. So, we hope you found this video inform informative, hopefully a little bit enjoyable, maybe, maybe entertaining. 
But uh, guys, we got more of this stuff coming. We appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch. Share this video with your buddies. Make sure they know. If anything, maybe you got a kick out of it, share it with your buddies. We'd appreciate it. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys. All right now.